A simple man and father to a young daughter, Tetsuo Tosu casually invites his daughter for lunch at a family restaurant. After arriving early at the dinner, Tetsuo waits for his daughter, Reika, to show up. Minutes later, a girl with a surgical mask and a cap concealing her face sits in front of Tetsuo. Almost instantly, Tetsuo breaks the ice by joking about Reika's extreme fashion choice. Not indulging in her father's jokes, Reika asks him about what he wanted to talk about. Before jumping into the conversation, Tetsuo tells Reika to take off her mask and cap. When Reika obliges to her father's orders, Tetsuo's eyes widen in surprise upon seeing his daughter's face covered in bruises. Upon asking her about the source of the marks, Reika tells him that she received them after falling from the stairs. Unable to believe her excuse, Tetsuo trails off by asking her if it was her boyfriend. Without answering him, Reika gathers her stuff and storms off, leaving her father screaming after her. The following day, Tetsuo decides to visit Reika's apartment. Before making his way inside the building, Tetsuo passes by a band of delinquents and overhears a snippet of their conversation. The ruffian in a yellow shirt proudly tells his friends about how he beat up his girlfriend. After applauding him for his work, they ask him for his girlfriend's name. Once the man utters Reika's name from his mouth, Tetsuo finds himself recalling his daughter's troubled face. With rage coursing through his veins, Tetsuo decides to follow the group of troublemakers. Soon, he finds himself in front of a shady building. As Tetsuo sees the delinquents make their way inside, he's stopped by a man in glasses who then forcefully takes him in an alleyway. After beating and stripping Tetsuo, the man sinisterly clicks his pictures and tells him that if he goes to the police, then he will leak his images. With that, he leaves Tetsuo to deal with the aftermath. Later, Tetsuo once again finds himself waking up to Reika's apartment. After using a spare key, he tries to tell himself that his daughter would never associate herself with scum like that. Not long after that, Tetsuo hears the abominable voice of Nobuto Matori in the hallway. After taking cover in a closet, Tetsuo listens to Nobuto revealing his dirty plans to extort Reika's money. On the phone, he airily talks about how he got rid of his past girlfriends. All of a sudden, Nobuto flies into rage upon learning that he was followed by Tetsuo yesterday. As Nobuto violently thrashes around the place, Tetsuo decides to warn his daughter about it when suddenly his phone slips out of his hand. In order to stop the mad vandal from opening the closet door, Tetsuo calls Nobuto on his cell phone. Upon receiving the call, Nobuto angrily tells him that he will kill him. Tetsuo answers his threat by telling him to come and try if he's man enough. Knowing that he can't take Nobuto with just his strength, Tetsuo uses the element of surprise. He cleverly lures Nobuto to open the closet door, and once the boy foolishly follows Tetsuo's words, Tetsuo flies out of the closet space. Within seconds, Tetsuo grabs a rice cooker and uses it to put an end to Nobuto's menace for good. The door opens and Tetsuo comes face to face with his wife, Kasen. After taking a seat beside her husband, Kasen asks Tetsuo if they can prove the act as self-defense. Tetsuo reveals to her that since Nabuto has killed two people before, it's highly likely that he has the support of the Yakuza. When the panic begins to settle in Tetsuo, Kasen lovingly consoles him by saying that perhaps they can relocate Nabuto's body far from the Yakuza's reach. From outside, a boy relays pieces of the conversation occurring inside the apartment to a man named Kubo. All of a sudden, old man Kubo alerts the boy about Reika's presence. As Reika walks into her apartment, she's greeted by her parents. Tetsuo tells her that she could stay with her mother for the night, as he had the misfortune of running into her boyfriend who appeared to be angry at her. Once Kasen and Reika take their leave, Kubo orders the boy to search the apartment. As the door handle begins to rattle violently, Tetsuo begins to panic. Elsewhere, Yoshihatsu Matori, the sovereign head of the organization, orders Kubo to find Nobuto, as he's the only family he has now. Kyoichi enters the apartment and finds Tetsuo scraping the bathroom floors. He nervously tells Kyoichi that he's the hired help that cleans the apartment for Reika. Startled by the whole event, Kyoichi lies and says that he's a friend of Nobuto who happened to have a spare key. Shortly after exiting the apartment, Kyoichi gets ordered by Kubo to keep an eye on Reika. Meanwhile, in the apartment, Tetsuo breathes a sigh of relief after his encounter with Kyoichi. Kasen enters the apartment with a suitcase and informs her husband that she brought everything he asked for. Tetsuo thanks Kasen for her help and then tells her to go home and prepare a meal for Reika. Alone in the apartment, Tetsuo gets to the dirty work of disposing Nobuto's body. After a taxing day, Tetsuo makes his way home, where he tells Reika to stay at their place for a week. The suggestion is met with a little protest as the Tosu family sits down to enjoy a game of poker. The next day, Tetsuo begins working on the second phase of his plan. With the bones and flesh still left to dispose of, he turns to leave early, when his wife stops him. Kasen brings Tetsuo's attention to a suspicious car parked outside their house. Recalling his walk back home, Tetsuo comes to the conclusion that they're being watched by the Yakuza. 
He makes his way to a store in order to take care of Nobuto's remains. Once Tetsuo makes his way inside, a few helpers of the Yakuza open his car to check for clues that'll help them find Nobuto. When the suitcase opens up to a bunch of Tetsuo's clothes, the men hastily make their exit. Tetsuo comes back to his car and immediately realizes that the suitcase has been tampered with. After returning home, Tetsuo tells Kasen that they must get rid of the remains by putting them inside a compost bin. As the plan sets in motion, Yoichi signals his lackey Shingo to converse with Tetsuo and Kasen. While Shingo engages the couple in a conversation, Yoichi infiltrates the house in search of evidence. After wrapping up the conversation, Tetsuo suddenly realizes that the back door was left open. When Yoichi, who had taken cover in the closet, sees the couple rush back inside, he comes to the conclusion that while they appear to be a normal couple, something is off about them. The following afternoon, Kasen stumbles upon a listening device. She immediately comes to Tetsuo, who uses the device to their advantage by creating a story of an obsessed stalker that has been in love with Reika. With Koichi and his goons listening intently, the couple deftly discuss how they think Reika's lover must have been abducted by the stalker. While walking home from work, Tetsuo is suddenly apprehended by the Yakuza. Similarly, Kasen is overpowered at her home. Three nights after Nobuto's murder, Tetsuo makes his way back to Reika's apartment in order to get rid of the stench. Meanwhile, Kyoichi tells Kubo about Tetsuo's whereabouts and also informs him that the stalker story by Kasen and Tetsuo was a lie. Once Tetsuo comes out of the apartment, Kyoichi and his men take the chance of kidnapping him. When taking him to an abandoned building, Kyoichi proceeds to torment him. He then questions him about the stalker story to which Tetsuo says that it happened last year when his wife noticed an old man lurking around Reika. Without disturbing their daughter, they ordered a private investigator, Suzuki, who confirmed their doubts. Upon hearing the name, Kyoichi's eyes widen as he recalls the cleaner at Reika's apartment who introduced himself as Suzuki. Yoichi's father tortures Tetsuo by suspending him in the air. He then questions him about Nobuto. Tetsuo anxiously tells them that he heard from Suzuki about Nobuto's fight with Reika, and hence warned his daughter to not stay the night at the apartment. After listening to Tetsuo, Kyoichi tells him that they'll believe his story after confirming with his wife. When Tetsuo desperately asks him if they'll be allowed to go after this, Kyoichi tells him that since they wasted so much on them, they will have to die regardless of the outcome. At the Tosu household, Kasen tells the same story to a group of masked men. She also realizes that the men might be affiliated with Nobuto's gang, but they aren't part of it. Once their answers are met by Kasen's riddles, the men decide to take their exit. With no other options left, Kyoichi tells Tetsuo that he needs to die. Upon realizing that Kyoichi will use his dead body to make him Nobuto's murderer, Tetsuo tells him that they can work together to find Nobuto. Tetsuo greets his wife and reveals that thanks to her participation, they've been cleared of suspicions. While looking at Kasen's relieved face, Tetsuo recalls his conversation with Kyoichi in the abandoned building. Kyoichi warns him that if he fails to find Nobuto by Friday, then he will kill him and paint him as Nobuto's murderer. After returning home, Tetsuo posts his next moves. With three options of either revealing everything to the police, frame someone else for Nobuto's murder, or create a fake reality where Nobuto is still alive, Tetsuo thinks hard to make his next step. The following night, Tetsuo meets up with Kyoichi. In the car, Kyoichi says to him that had he been a second late, he would have sent his nude photo to everyone in his contact list. The men then silently made their way to a cafe where Kyoichi introduces Tetsuo to a girl named Hibiki by stating that she's Nobuto's woman. Upon hearing this, Tetsuo finds himself getting angry for his daughter. After calming himself down a little, Tetsuo asks Hibiki about Nobuto. The girl goes on to say that once Nobuto cheated on her with four different girls, but when she tried breaking up with him, he apologized to her and told her that she was the one for him. When Tetsuo reveals that Nobuto was involved with another girl, Hibiki says that she knows that Nobuto was dating Reika, but it was purely for work, as Nobuto hated getting intimate with her. Unable to control his anger, Tetsuo excuses himself. In the bathroom, he thinks about how he's going to kill Nobuto. Unfortunately, you can't kill a man twice. After returning to the table, Tetsuo manages to win Hibiki's trust and learns that Nobuto betrayed his organization by robbing a car that the organization was planning to rob. All of a sudden, a group of men accompanied by Kyoichi surround their table. After putting Tetsuo and Kyoichi in cuffs, a man in glasses coerces them to steal a bag from two violent gangs. In the car, Kyoichi tells Tetsuo that he knows he killed Nobuto, and that's why he paired up with him. Once Kyo Yoichi and Tetsuo are signaled to make their move, the men enter the scene with bullets raining on them. Luckily, Tetsuo manages to pull Kyoichi out of the car before it catches fire. While running to safety, Kyoichi finds himself losing blood due to the gun wounds. 
Tetsuo places him down and says that he can't die just yet. Upon hearing this, Kyoichi snaps at him and says that he's much more sinister than he likes to think. All of a sudden, an armed man appears in front of them. Before the man can pose a threat to Tetsuo or Kyoichi, Kobu takes him down with a single bullet. He then patches up Kyoichi and orders Tetsuo to stand in front of the camera and admit to killing the man. After capturing the video, Kubo smirks and says that he can extort more money from Tetsuo's parents with the video. Once Tetsuo makes his way home, Kasen asks him what he's been up to. When her question is responded with a lie, she angrily tells her husband that he's part of the family too, therefore he should take care of himself as well. Upon hearing this, Tetsuo reveals to her that the organization has been monitoring him, and if they don't find Nobuto soon, then they'll frame him for his murder. Upon hearing this, Kasen worriedly asks her husband about their next move. Tetsuo then says that he's thinking about fabricating evidence which will prove that Nobuto is alive and well. For the task, they hire an old friend, Tabata, to create a video that will serve as evidence of proving Nobuto's well-being. Then, in order to log into Nobuto's SNS account, Tetsuo makes his way to Nobuto's favorite restaurant for clues regarding his password. There, he bumps into none other than Yoshitatsu Matori, who ominously tells him that if someone tries to hurt his child, he'll kill everyone in his path. Once that man takes his leave, Tetsuo asks the bartender about Nobuto. When he learns that the man he was talking to earlier is Nobuto's father, Tetsuo's eyes widen in horror. After his brief interaction with Yoshitatsu, the gravity of his crime dawns upon him. Tetsuo thinks about all the people that loved and believed in Nobuto, which ends up making him cry. In the car, Yoshitatsu tells Kubo that if they're unable to find his son, Nobuto, then he will leave the organization. Upon hearing that, Kubo tries to reason with him by saying that if he leaves, the income over the organization will drop by 30%. All of a sudden, Kubo gets a call from someone who informs him about a video on Nobuto's private SNS. Elsewhere, Kyoichi drags Tetsuo with him by telling him that a video of Nobuto has appeared. He takes him to a factory where a bunch of workers work to identify the authenticity of the video. Tetsuo thinks about how he has Plan B in motion in case Plan A fails. Soon, a man rushes inside and announces that the video is fake, as the man in the video has a different gait than Nobuto's. Suspecting that Tetsuo has killed Nobuto, Kyoichi drags Tetsuo out and says to him that he'll search his house for evidence. After entering the Tosu household, Kyoichi immediately tells Tetsuo to empty the compost bin. After knowing that Nobuto would have turned to dirt by now, Tetsuo adheres to the orders. As Kyoichi begins searching through the soil, Tetsuo suddenly notices a strand of Nobuto's hair. Afraid of Kyoichi finding the hair, Tetsuo contemplates on killing him, when all of a sudden, Kasen invites the man for a cup of coffee. After drinking the coffee, Kyoichi blatantly tells Kasen that he's from the organization. The two immediately start verbally fighting when all of a sudden, Kyoichi's stomach begins to growl. As he rushes to the loo, Kasen informs Tetsuo that she put laxatives in the coffee. With Tetsuo's own stomach doing somersaults, he quickly puts spyware on Kyoichi's laptop and rushes outside to take a dump. After clearing his stomach, Kyoichi comes out of the bathroom and bumps into Reika. Kyoichi glares at Reika and cynically says that she must be worried sick about her boyfriend's disappearance. With that, he picks up his laptop bag and exits the room, leaving Reika both surprised and confused. With only Kasen present in the room, Reika loudly asks her why she would tell a strange man about Nobuto. Unable to answer her, Kasen begins to stutter. Luckily, Tetsuo walks in and saves Kasen by saying that they confided in Kyoichi because they were looking for advice on how to keep her away from bad men. When Reika presses on the subject, Kasen adds in another lie, stating Kyoichi is a famous womanizer in her dad's company. Once Reika buys the lies, Kasen and Tetsuo go out to see off Kyoichi. Kasen extends a tissue roll to Kyoichi, to which she responds by grumpily telling her to leave him alone. As Kyoichi takes Tetsuo with him, Kasen, using the bug, starts listening to their conversation. She grumbles when Kyoichi calls her annoying and her own husband ends up agreeing with him. When Kasen reads through Kyoichi's emails, Reika finds Kyoichi Kyoichi's note inside her shoe. Inside the note, Kyoichi asks her to contact him as her parents are hiding something. Meanwhile, Kasen turns pale upon learning that the organization plans on killing her husband, so they can use his body to frame him for Nobuto's murder. Kasen concludes that his goal is to stop Yoshitatsu from leaving the organization. On the other hand, Kyoichi asks Tetsuo to open the door to Reika's apartment. When inside, Tetsuo begins to have flashbacks of his crimes. Meanwhile, Kasen stops by Kyoichi's house where she runs into his old mother. Using the guise of a salesperson, Kasen learns from Kyoichi's mother that Kyoichi's father killed himself after being backed into a corner by a crime syndicate. 
As the woman tells Kasen that the only reason she was able to go on after her husband's death was because of Kyoichi, who promised to open a diner with her, Kasen begins to rethink her moves. As it turns out, she went to Kyoichi's house with the goal of framing him as Nobuto's murderer. In the end, Kasen departs from the residence, clutching Nobuto's remains and a damning tablet that could paint Kyoichi as the mastermind behind the murder. Inside Reika's apartment, Kyoichi smiles with wickedness as Reika responds to the note. Kasen logs back into Kyoichi's emails and discovers the conversation between him and Reika. Once Reika agrees to meet Kyoichi, Kasen curses her hesitance on removing Kyoichi. With that, she concludes that he's in the way after all. In the meantime, Kyoichi handcuffs Tetsuo and states that he's stepping out for a bit. Once he leaves, Kasen fills in her husband on Kyoichi's conversation with Reika. Once Kasen comes over with the evidence of Nobuto's murder, Tetsuo comes up with an elaborate plan on planting the evidence in Kyoichi's apartment while Kasen will take care of Reika. However, as Tetsuo makes it to Kyoichi's building, his eyes widen in fear when he sees Kyoichi appearing from the elevator. A close call with Kyoichi makes Tetsuo realize that he needs to be more vigilant. Meanwhile, Kasen greets Reika and asks about her plans. Reika tries her best to dodge Kasen's sharp questions by telling her that she's meeting up with a college friend. Not being one to relent, Kasen says that she'll wait and say hello to her friend. When Reika tells her to go home, Kasen manages to use the situation to her advantage by crying loudly. In the end, Reika caves in. At Kyoichi's apartment building, Kasen tells Tetsuo to inform him that she was successful in her mission. After the call, Tetsuo hurries toward Kyoichi's apartment. When the plan to break into Kyoichi's apartment using the thumb turn tool fails, Tetsuo changes his plan and decides to use the roof. However, upon reaching the terrace, he succumbs in disappointment as he realizes that he doesn't have the right tools to break into Kyoichi's apartment. A glimpse of Kasen and Reika's face once again fills Tetsuo with hope. Arriving back at Reika's apartment, Tetsuo handcuffs himself. When Kyoichi returns, Tetsuo picks up on his foul mood and asks if everything is okay. Instead of answering, Kyoichi asks Tetsuo why he looks so fatigued. Once Tetsuo tells him that he struggled to get himself free from the handcuffs, Kyoichi begins to search for Nobuto's bloodstains using an ALS light. He becomes upset when nothing appears and contacts his assistant to verify that he got a cheap ALS light. After denying his accusations, the man informs him that he left the envelope that he emailed about in his mailbox. When Kyoichi asks him to forward the mail, he looks at Tetsuo and wonders if he was the one who sent the email. He tries to reason with himself since Tetsuo's GPS didn't detect any movements, nor did he sound off on the phone. Tetsuo then asks Kyoichi if he was in an argument with Takeda. When Kyoichi asks him to elaborate, Tetsuo reveals that one of the two guys who was watching him told him that Takeda suspects him as Nobuto's murderer. To plant more doubts in Kyoichi's mind, Tetsuo says that perhaps Takeda sent that mysterious email. When Kyoichi tries to push the thoughts out of his head, Tetsuo suddenly begs him to go back to his apartment as he believes that something is going on behind their backs. As it turns out, one hour ago, Tetsuo had switched Kyoichi's ASL light with a black light. In present time, Kyoichi drags a handcuffed Tetsuo to his apartment where they begin searching for the envelope. Tetsuo learns a great deal about Kyoichi's living situation while pretending to cooperate with him. Sensing that something's off, Kyoichi calls Tetsuo out by saying that in reality, he wants him to get framed. Tetsuo lies and says that he wants Takeda to take the fall for Nobuto's murder. Kyoichi scoffs and states that he'll never work with Tetsuo. Out of nowhere, Tetsuo's mind is flooded with memories of his father's words. His father's voice echoed in his ears, telling him the somber truth that even though the police toiled tirelessly to uphold justice, there lingers a prevailing possibility of the system faltering, failing to bring justice sought by all. As Tetsuo's eyes water, Kyoichi asks him if he's okay. He tells him that he's just been through a lot. All of a sudden, a loud grumble escapes through Tetsuo's stomach. He nervously tells Kyoichi that they should eat something, as it could be their last last meal. He goes on to tell him that his parents died in a pileup accident and how his father was an honest police officer. Kyoichi stares, knowingly, as he had previously done a background check on Tetsuo. He gets up and announces that he'll prepare a meal. Tetsuo pleads with Kyoichi to make his death look like an accident or suicide, as he doesn't want Reika to be burdened. Later on, the two men meet with Takeda, who berates Kyoichi for not being able to find any incriminating evidence against Tetsuo. All of a sudden, Takeda stands up in shock upon receiving an email. He tells his lackeys to keep an eye on Kyoichi and orders Tetsuo to follow him outside. Outside, Takeda asks Tetsuo to tell him everything about his time with Kyoichi. 
As it turns out, the email claimed that Nobuto and Kyoichi were the masterminds of robbing the vehicle the organization had its sights set on. With the information given to Takeda by Tetsuo, he informs his lackeys to recheck Nobuto's room. Upon discovering bundles of cash, Takeda orders a search on Kyoichi's place. When Kyoichi realizes that he's being framed for the robbery, he grabs Tetsuo by his throat. Luckily, Takeda kicks him and tells him to prove his innocence. Outside Kyoichi's building, Takeda greets Kubo. Together, they go inside to confirm whether Kyoichi was in on the robbery. While that possibility is ruled out, they end up discovering a mysterious bag behind the safe. Kyoichi creates a scene, pleading Kubo that he has no idea how the bag got in his apartment. As Takeda empties the bag, the group stares in horror upon discovering piles of bones. After confirming that the bones belonged to Nobuto, Kyoichi desperately pleads with Kubo that it was all Takeda and Tetsuo's doing. Kubo calmly tells Takeda to bring Kyoichi's body to Yoshitatsu in a body bag. As the men begin to gag Kyoichi, Tetsuo looks at him with pity. It turns out that he had told Takeda that Kyoichi was desperately trying to look for hidden devices in the apartment and appeared to be nervous about something. And while he was in the bathroom, he had asked Kasen to send the email to Takeda and to place the evidence in Kyoichi's apartment. As Takeda allows Tetsuo to take his leave, Tetsuo takes one last look at Kyoichi. He asserts that the only reason why he was lost was because he was alone. After all, the only reason why Tetsuo was able to walk as a free man is because Kasen lent him a hand. It's revealed that Tetsuo guided Kasen to break into Kyoichi's apartment by helping her choose the appropriate tools required for the job. Having successfully infiltrated the room, Tetsuo swiftly instructs her to utilize the ASL light to crack open the safe. The reason being that the ASL light possesses the remarkable ability to detect and reveal fingerprints. After that, it was pure luck that helped Kasen unlock the safe. Meanwhile, Kyoichi refuses to submit to a terrible fate. After violently throwing off the man holding him down, Kyoichi uses the last bit of his cash to create a diversion. As people clamor the streets to hoard the money falling from the sky, Kyoichi takes the opportunity to run away. After creating a safe distance between himself and Takeda's men, a wounded Kyoichi reflects on how he saw a pair of scratch marks on the door. Meanwhile, Tetsuo enters Rika's apartment and recalls the bizarre events that occurred in the past week. While lying down, he thinks about how he used Kyoichi's past, present, and future to divert his attention as he opened the window for Kasen to execute the next part of their plan. Meanwhile, in the Tosu residence, Reika reveals that it just dawned upon her that she's seen Kyoichi lingering in the hallway, the day of Nobuto's disappearance. Moreover, she heard from her friend that a guy was asking about her. She then concludes her speculation by stating that Kyoichi is her stalker after all. Upon hearing that, Kasen sighs in relief. Kyoichi, on the other hand, calls Yoshitatsu, who tells them that he sure has a lot of nerves to call him. Kyoichi pleads to his innocence and states that it was Tetsuo who killed Nobuto. Kyoichi breaks into a clinical smirk upon realizing that Tetsuo must have had Kasen as a collaborator. He quickly dials Yoshitatsu's number and tells them that if he decides to trust the organization's verdict, then the real killer will roam freely. He entices Yoshitatsu further by stating that after the organization learned that Nobuto was behind the robbery, they lost interest in finding him. Instead, they planned on framing someone in order to appease him. After ending the call, Yoshitatsu goes berserk and trashes his office. He then calmly rings Kubo and tells him to get something for him. Meanwhile, Tetsuo wakes up to the door rattling. He instantly takes cover and discovers that Yoshitatsu has entered an apartment with an ASL light. Yoshitatsu's eyes widen as he sees blood splattered all across the floor. He immediately falls down and cries while hugging the floor, filling Tetsuo with more guilt. When the ASL light reveals more bloodstains on the cupboard, Yoshitatsu asks loudly if he's inside. With his covers blown, Tetsuo comes out and admits his crimes. Yoshitatsu gets up and states that he will kill him and his family after Tetsuo tells him that he'll turn himself into the police. Upon hearing that, Tetsuo pleads with Yoshitatsu to spare his family. However, Yoshitatsu remains adamant and says that he once told him he'd kill anyone who harms Nobuto, along with their family. He even tells Tetsuo that had he known he was the culprit, it would have ended him on the same night they met. When Tetsuo tries one last time to persuade him, Yoshitatsu gives him a violent and graphic description of what he'll do to his wife and daughter, and then to him. As he proceeds to call Kubo, Tetsuo gets into attack mode. A fight ensues between the two. 
Yoshitatsu uses a pepper spray on Tetsuo, yet he doesn't allow himself to falter for a second. Kubo, on the other hand, calls Doi, Yoshitatsu's driver, to ask him about Yoshitatsu. When Doi states that Yoshitatsu appeared in a foul mood, Kubo decides not to meddle further. As the fight gets more aggressive, the neighbors decide to call the police. Meanwhile, Yoshitatsu wraps a wire against Tetsuo's throat and tells him to just give in. Yoshitatsu begins narrating his life while suffocating Tetsuo. He tells him how his parents never had time for him, so they forced him to study hard. Once he graduated, his parents made him marry a woman of their choosing. Even when his wife got pregnant, he still didn't receive any love. However, he started to grow hopeful after Nobuto's birth. Once Nobuto was sent to juvenile prison for violence, Yoshihatsu gave up on his life. The organization scouted him and convinced him to restart his life for Nobuto's sake. As Tetsuo breaks the wire, Yoshitatsu breaks down and asks where he went wrong. Not gonna lie, bud, but probably the part where you joined the Yakuza. After faltering for a moment, Yoshihatsu grabs the knife and pushes it into his abdomen, when a knock interrupts Tetsuo's raging thoughts. Outside, two policemen tell Tetsuo to open the door. After coming to the conclusion that he can't get caught just yet, he grabs Yoshitatsu to prevent him from making any noise. The suffocation eventually leads to Yoshitatsu's demise. Tetsuo then tells the police that his daughter's hamster's on the loose, so he can't open the door. The police, being clueless in every scenario, end up believing his story. Once they leave, Tetsuo informs Kasen that he'll be late. As Kasen tells Reika that her father will be home late, she mentions how Tetsuo has always looked after her, and how he better hurry home. Meanwhile, Tetsuo enters a forest where he digs a hole to bury Yoshitatsu. While covering up his sins, he wonders if he'll ever be forgiven. Tetsuo returns home and is greeted by an overwhelmed Kasen. Tetsuo takes her into his arms, allowing her to weep. Things return to normalcy for the Tosu family for now, so it seems. And that's the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this, so I'll see you at the next one.